So I think, uh, you know, you guys got to understand what you're going to see up here. This guy's a literary legend. He's still getting it done. He's still getting it done. And this is the author, this is the award-winning author of White Light, for example. And, you know, it's not a mistake, White Light, White Heat, and his novel, White Light, you know? He was like... He was the first guy I met in a science fiction scene who knew who the Ramones were. He, I remember he talked about the Ramones being about a density of information. You know? It wasn't noise, it was a density of information. It was intensity. That's what it was about. It was about intensity. And Rudy understood that. And, you know, it's, it's brilliant. It's conceptually brilliant. And he breaks all kinds of rules. And he still makes a totally coherent story out of something that should be impossible. It should be impossible to make a coherent story out of the stuff that Rudy works with. And he does it, and he sucks you in, and you find yourself in an entire different reality. Now, please welcome the master cyberpunk, Rudy Rucker. Thanks, John. That was a, a good introduction. I couldn't have done it better myself. Uh, it's nice to be back here at the makeup room, too. Um, so the first story I'm going to read, uh, it has to do, these are some lost letters by William Burroughs that I found uh, that he wrote in Tangiers. Or Tangier, this is more commonly said. To Allen Ginsberg, Tangiers, December 20th, 1954. Dear Alan, I've settled back into Tangier. They got everything I want. Each trip to the homeland drags me more. How did we ever let our cops get so out of hand? You gotta dig the Soco Chico when you, find, when you and Jack come. The little market, the anything goes inner zone of the inner zone. I met an interesting guy in the Cafe Central last night, his face all dead and gray. He says he's a math prof. Talks like a full-on grip boffin. Languid blither with stutters and pauses like Morse code. Pathetically glad to talk to me. And I'm all ears, lonely Ruth amid the alien corn. While he's talking, he picks shreds of flesh off his cheeks. Picking up on my visceral, rep visceral repulsion, he reassures me that his face is a personal condition and not a communicable disease says he's safe as houses, and that he goes running on the beach five miles every morning for his health. It's a wonder the boys don't tear him apart barehanded and roast him like a goat. Real-time message from the borough's memory unit. Last night, I offered to let the decaying math prompt bunk in the spare room of this whorehouse suite where I hang my writer shingle. The horror, Alan, the horror. He's coming up the stairs, his gray pie face aimed unerringly my way like a lamprey's toothed sucker disc. Love, Bill. To Jack Kerouac, Tangier, December 22nd, 1954. Dear Jack, I'm lodging the shameless mooch Alan Turing, who was a code breaker in the war. And the authorities are out to liquidate him on account of he's queer. Strictly platonic between him and me, you understand. We're two logical, analytic brains in jars, Turing and me. Except when I catch his brain stem schlupping across the counter and binding up my favorite boy's leg. But that's nothing compared to the real-life routine my prof in residence is laying down. And this is the tasty part. Turing is wearing an artificial face, a meat skin flesh mask that he pancaked on to escape the limey spook heat. It's like Allah sends him here special to be my gungy muse. Fed by the inner zone's miasmas, his face rot have turned galloping necrotic. So as soon as he move in with me, Turing drop all dignity and begin mewling and clawing at himself. Oh, how it burns, Bill! Can you give me something for the pain? My rep have perceived me. I fix him with an ampule of Yucadol and sit in my rocking chair watching the show. While he's dreamy, this one particular centipede named of Ahmed crawl out of the crack by the toilet bowl to munch on his cheek. I break off a twitching bug leg and smoke it in my tessellated pipe. 
This afternoon, the situation reached the inevitable crisis as Turing's horrible condition has turned him into a junk hog. I find all my ampules gone, and my guest is knotted out on the shitter floor. In a spasm of disgust, I am compelled to remove his moribund facial tissues, using my scalpel-sharp shiv to sever the capillary-rich tissues. I burned his face in the bidet, I did, doused it in canned heat, hideous crackling stench, a gendarme compounding on my door. I yell that I'm making a pork couscous and can I borrow a pint of piss? <laughs> and then Turing rises up from his sedation and runs out on the balcony screaming like a lobster lost his shell, blending his voice with the muzine in the minaret across the way. He's asleep on the couch now, with smooth jelly ooze on his face, UDT, undifferentiated tissue, liable to take root and grow anywhere. <coughs> As ever, Bill. To Jack Kerouac, Tangier, December 24th, 1954. Dear Jack, clickety-clack, happy keys on my typewriter. I dance the alphabet while my zombie-faced professor putters at my kitchen counter. He planned to change his looks yet again and then to obtain a fresh passport. He giving me the horrors with his boffin etiquette. I say, bros, could you possibly procure a pint of potassium permanganate? <laughs> He sent me out to the pharmacy twice today for like strepococcal infusion and bovine growth hormone. Drip, stir, measure, mix, low mutter, squeak of pencil on paper. Last night Turing sneaked out and stole two car batteries. The batteries connect to pulsing color juice between two sheets of glass he cut out of my window. I watched it this morning for a few hours, Jaguar gauge visions, n-dimensional towers, sea cucumbers of the hollow earth, branching tentacles of the crooked beetle, but then Jones, an old face, transitioning through the days and months of decomposition, touring at his image controls, watching me sob his raw face unreadable. One thing he say this afternoon is very disturb me. Turns out he can't buy fake papers. Tomorrow, for Christmas, I want to be you. Teeth bared in a corpse rictus grin, voice flat and wistful like a prairie orphan, as ever, Bill. To Allen Ginsberg, December 25th, 1954. When I wake up this morn, there's no gay, bright presence. Instead, I see Turing's become a human-sized slug, all slimy with undifferentiated tissue. He slime up onto the wall and across the ceiling. He moved very fast for a mollusk, like speeded up movie schlup. He dropped down and assimilate me right in my bed. Our skins quilt themselves together. All is one. Everything is merged inside. We're filled with white light ecstasy. Our four tranced eyes stare up like empty mirrors. Sexy the way our livers slide across each other. Tasty. <laughs> Tasty, how bump and grind. With the orgone pleasure rush comes a nausea like I never feel it before. My trillions of cells in revolt against Turing's violation of the immune system code. Feeling overly full, your humble correspondent lumbered down the stairs to his filth-strewn backyard and took a 70-kilogram dump. Eliminating redundant units like a corporation right-sizing herself after a handsome acquisition. <laughs> Mercy me, but I was shivers all over when I passed that gentleman's skull. Can't say as I actually looked back at what I shit out, just scuffed some dust over the remains like a dog does, then hurried back inside for a festive libation. And now the shambling thump of something unholy puffs up the sun-sharpened stairs to my door, the creature dragging himself towards me like a canvas sack of black meat. Taking a jujitsu stance, I open my door to find a lean, weathered man with thin lips and a sly smile, bald on top, horsey jaw, narrow nose, keen eyes. He's really quite dazzling, this fellow. I might as well be looking into a mirror. This weasel Turing have absorbed my chromosomes so he can lift my papers. 
I'm giving him $100, my passport, and a letter of reference just for the pleasure of seeing his questionable ass going out of my door to get me before he get me exiled from this land of Nod. Love, Bill. To, Mor to Mortimer Burroughs. Dear Father, the man who bears this letter and my passport has taken on my form as a way to enjoy and avoid unjust persecutions of the sort that I myself am subject to, I ask you to assist him as much as you can. Love to Mother and Merry Christmas to you both. Billy.